Well, it's important for us that we, we look at an ecosystem and a watershed like the Quay because of its, its health status. And it's, um, we know that there's, a, there's a, a healthy grizzly bear population. We know that there's a, a healthy salmon run. Um, and we've experienced this in other watersheds where we lose our salmon or the salmon runs depleted, whether it's uh, overfishing or logging or whatever. You lose the salmon, you lose your grizzly bears, you lose your trees aren't as healthy, your plants aren't as healthy. So it's, it's, uh, it's obvious and we know from, from experience that if you lose one, one part of our, of our cycle that exists in these ecosystems, it'll all collapse. It's, it, it just takes one keystone species like the salmon or the grizzly bears to leave and everything else suffers. And then it'll just continue to go downhill from there until there's nothing. And that's one of the reasons that we've um, put a conservation tag on Quay because it still has a healthy salmon run, a healthy grizzly bear population. We want to preserve that and keep it going like that so that we don't lose everything we have here because this system, as well as many others that are in our territory, are, are vital and have been vital to the health sick for 10,000 years. Well, from a, from a young child, I, I grew up with my grandparents on my mother's side. Uh, I lived with them for my entire life, still live with them. In their, um, in their late 80s, they're both fluent speakers of our language and have been in and around our culture for their whole lives, so I was able to, uh, fortunate enough to sit, spend time with them and learn the language. And um, one of my uh, distant family members who is now passed was there who was the song leader and kind of the wisdom keeper and knowledge keeper. So I was fortunate enough to spend a lot of time with him and learn all of the, the names of, of the individual people in the community, learn all of the songs and the different rituals and what we call our guilas, our laws that we've formulated over the years to govern our people. So it, I've kind of grown into that position and kind of taken over uh, leadership in that in the last three or four years um, with the help of many other young ones around my age and younger. We've kind of taken over a new surge in um, cultural revitalization, so to speak, after our, a lack of knowledge within our last generation after the residential schools. It's kind of having a big boost with our young people now. But it's I've kind of, kind of uh, put in my extra time to kind of work myself to the top as a leader of the, of the cultural part of the community. So it's been a long, long road to get there, but it's definitely um, uh, connected in my work as well as even when I'm out in the work, work, work area in these watersheds, I'm able to connect with the different stories and the songs that I know and get to go to a place where a song and where my family's from and just to kind of connect in that way and keep, the, keep a big consistent circle. And then that part of that circle that includes the grizzly bear and the salmon yeah has to include the people. Totally. Well, our people have been dependent on these, these seas and these land resources for 10,000 years. And, um, and I don't think that's ever going to change because uh, our people are so dependent on the salmon and the game and other sorts of all these plants and animals that are living here. Our people have thrived off them for years. So we're, we're not about to kind of step back and let all of that just go to waste. We're about to kind of conserve that. and. Um, take them sustainably like we have for the last 10,000 years. So that's kind of our goal is to kind of live like our old people used to sustainably so that we can continue to have an abundance of resources for not only my generation, but generations to follow. So yeah, we did a 1,000 year management plan just because we, we know we've kind of, we've seen over the years a little bit of the changes that have gone on and they haven't been to our liking. And we've kind of looked down the road a ways and seen that if things continue on the same trend that there's going to be nothing left. So we did put together this long, long-term management plan so that um, things can kind of stay static for, for many years so that our, you know, five, six generations from now, our, our children can be in the same shoes working to preserve and conserve all at the same time living sustainably. And that's kind of our, was our main focus and, um, and point of doing that long-term management plan was that we will have all of this here forever because we have been here for since the beginning and we want to be here until the end if there's ever an end. Yeah.